This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University. And today I want to talk about whether inflation is actually good for you. About a week ago, I made this video where I included this meme. And the way this meme goes is it basically follows the Fed talking about inflation. At first, there's no inflation. Then, well, there might be a little bit of inflation, but it's still very low. Most recently, in the last few months, we've been seeing the Fed and Treasury saying that inflation is transitory. In other words, it's going to disappear as, as soon as the supply chain shortages or, or something like this disappear. And the point of this meme, of course, is to joke that we've reached the point in clown world where everyone would be saying that inflation is good. Now, news, no sooner had I published this video, but you guys started sending me this article, thanks to all of you who sent it to me, about how inflation is good for you. It didn't take long to go from meme to uh, clown world reality. Now, the basic argument is this. Working class and middle class people have a lot of debt. This is what John Schwartz, the, uh, the author of the article, is arguing. Working class and middle class people have a lot of debt. Inflation erodes the real burden of this debt. And here's the, where his conspiracy comes in. The conspiracy thinking is that rich people don't want poor people to know about this, so they run lots of articles in the fin financial press talking about how bad inflation is. And, and hence, the inflation debate is actually just all about class warfare. Inflation is hurting the 1%, the top net worth and top income earners, and helping the 99%. Now, one of these, his, his basic statement here is true. We do know that inflation is good for debtors, it's bad for creditors. So if you owe a lot of money, you want inflation because that helps to ease the real burden of your debt. So for example, if there's inflation and your wages are going up, you're better able to service the debt. And if the debt has a fixed income rate, this can be very beneficial. This is how people make money on their homes over time. Inflation is bad for creditors, especially if you lend out money at a lower interest rate than the rate of inflation. We've talked about on this channel how the U.S. government is a huge debtor, so it wants inflation and wants to bring the debt-to-GDP level to much lower, more manageable levels by sort of inflating our way out of our current debt situation. People who hold U.S. treasuries, which is U.S. government uh, debt, are large creditors, and so they don't want inflation. Now, why, if you're holding a government bond, would you not want inflation or really any kind of bond? Right now, the U.S. 10-year note, U.S. 10-year Treasury, is paying about 1.6%. CPI inflation, which is a manipulated number, the real inflation rate, I believe, is much higher than this. But even the government's massage numbers are saying that inflation is at 6.2%, which is actually quite severe. And thus, if you just subtract these two, if you're getting paid 1.6% a year to hold an asset and it's uh, the CPI inflation is 6.2%, you're basically losing purchasing power on a real basis. Your purchasing power is shrinking by almost 5%. So this is why inflation is bad for creditors who hold debt. Now what John Schwartz argues is that inflation is helping the poor by eroding the real value of their debt. Here's his quote. Uh, First, inflation lessens the, val the real value of debt. In 2020, American households had around $14.5 trillion in debt from their mortgages, credit cards, student loans, and other sources. Inflation of 6.2% means that the real value of that $14.5 trillion is now just $13.65 trillion, trillion in last year's dollars. So he basically does an inflation, inflation adjustment. Now, the one thing he seems to be forgetting, though, is that the vast majority of this household debt that he's talking about, he cites a 2020 number of $14.5 trillion. It's closer to $5 trillion as of the second quarter of this year. We can see the blue, uh, the blue space down here. That is mortgage debt. By comparison, student loan, uh, credit card debt, home loan, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, auto loan is a much smaller piece of the pie. But basically about 10 million, I'm sorry, 10 trillion out of 15 trillion of household debt is mortgage debt. And so I want to ask John, John, who owns all those houses? The, uh, the middle class and working class own how, have a, a much lower home ownership rate than uh, upper middle class or one percenters. Certainly we can see here that the national home ownership rate in 2020 was about 67%. So about a third of the population were renters, and that is largely skewed toward younger adults. 65% of renters are younger, are, are young adults. Meanwhile, we have U.S. housing prices, because of all the Fed's money printing, jumping the most 
in more than three decades. In part of the article, John Schwartz starts is celebrating working class wages going up by 5.8%. We have seen uh, wage pressure. And he points out that this almost completely hedges out that 6.2% inflation print because these numbers are very close to each other. What he neglects to mention, though, of course, is that housing prices over that same period of time went up 14%. So if you get a wage bump of about 6% and your rent goes up 14%, you are certainly falling behind. Rising housing prices means higher rents for the working class. And who do you think owns all those rental properties? Schwartz fails to mention this. The nicer thing, if you own an investment property, higher rents help to preserve you as the landlord, help to preserve your purchasing power. And this way you're sort of hedged. If there's a lot of asset price inflation or CPI inflation and it makes its way into rent, you are hedged because your rental payments go up uh, or the rent you're receiving goes up. Meanwhile, it's a burden on the people who are renting your property. Wealthy people protect their purchasing power by owning assets, by owning lots of assets. And if you look at the wealthiest people in the world, they're usually people who have huge concentrated stock portfolios in companies that they started, people like Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk. But they also own real estate and increasingly things like Bitcoin. And this is a group, and I'm included in this group, that has been massively benefiting from asset price inflation for the last Decade. So this is a really key point that John fails to point out when he talks about household debt. This mortgage debt is held by the upper 66% of the population, and their real debt burden is shrinking as housing prices move up. By contrast, wealthy people barely notice when fuel and grocery prices go up. There is some, uh, it does filter through into other prices but it hurts wealthier people much less than working class, middle class, lower middle class households that are just scraping by. So if you're just barely able to pay your monthly bills, pay your rent, pay your groceries and your fuel costs from your salary, any uptick in those expenses and grocery prices, which have just been disastrous, and uh, gas prices, for example, if you have a long commute to work, can be disastrous. So if you're just scraping by, and because of CPI inflation, grocery and gas prices go up a lot, what, what are you going to do? You basically need to take on more debt just to stay, uh, to, to, to break even. And for the working class, it's usually a much higher, much more high interest rate debt. So debt that has requires a higher interest rate to service, like credit cards, for example. Meanwhile, the wealthier piece of the pie, the 66% we were talking about, these homeowners, uh, like myself as well, take on low interest rate debt to finance their home purchases. Money printing, Fed policy causes these houses to skyrocket in value, as we saw going up 14, 50% just in the last 12 months, while the actual mortgage debt burden is eroded by inflation. Again, inflation is good when you hold debt, especially low interest rate debt. And most mortgage debt has interest rates that are well below the rate of inflation now. Mortgage rates are anywhere from two to two to four and a half percent, depending depending what you're doing. In fact, I know very few wealthy people who do not have mortgages. Uh, in, in this in this Fed monetary environment, it actually makes a lot of sense to have a mortgage, even if you could have paid could have afforded to pay cash for your house, simply because as long as your house or your real estate investment is appreciating at a greater rate than your mortgage interest rate, it's a no-brainer. You are staying ahead and you can leverage yourself in this fairly safe way and uh, pr profit not just from the appreciating asset, but the real burden of the debt de decreasing due to inflation. The other piece that John Schwartz fails to mention when he talks about how good inflation is for poor people is that only 55% of Americans own stock. So we can see what the stock market's done over the past 12 months. It's really just been straight up. And the wealthier, those who own real estate and those who have stock portfolios have disproportionately benefited from this money printing. So to conclude, inflation disproportionately hurts the working and middle classes because they have to pay more for goods and services. And wealthier folks are less affected since they own a lot of assets, houses, stocks, Bitcoin, that massively benefit from Fed money printing. Normally in a high inflation environment, it would hurt asset prices as well, but we really have 
central banking for the rich now. The Fed is is causing inflation through their money printing, but they're also artificially keeping interest rates low by buying treasuries and mortgage bonds. And so we have this situation where normally if inflation spikes, asset prices crash, that would disproportionately hurt the rich. Uh, but we have this situation that is really the perfect storm in a good way for wealthier people and the perfect storm in a bad way for less wealthy people. Asset prices keep going up. And uh, meanwhile, there is this high inflation, but it's not affecting the discount rate and causing the stock market and real estate market to crash. The Fed is keeping asset prices high in spite of inflation. So I would say that John Schwartz really needs to re-examine his argument. He provides just a tiny piece of this, and it's extremely, extremely misleading. It looks like this guy used to work for Michael Moore, so I'm not surprised he's used to writing things like this. But inflation is not good for anyone. Inflation is a hidden tax. Inflation is one of the great evils of the fiat money system. Wealthier people know how to deal with it, know, to, know how to hedge it. Poorer people do not know how to hedge it. And so inflation really is a form of class warfare, where Wall Street and the central bankers are disproportionately hurting the middle and working classes. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.